All right, everybody, welcome to Wednesday Winners. We do this every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. What we're going to do is we have some broad topics that we cover on national calls for training. This is where you get the finesse. This is where you get the details. Uh, we've got a special guest here with us today. We've got SVP Aaron Goodman bringing us some exciting news. So, Aaron, why don't you take it away? It is exciting. I hope you guys were on um, the Monday call with uh, the interview with Blaze Foray. So, Blaze has been testing this out. We've been watching – different tactics and blaze kind of headed this up as far as adding co and complementing what we're currently doing. Obviously, you know, when we start new agents out, Diane, we use age, right? We get on our live dial sessions. We call people up, we set appointments. Well, on top of that, we've been doing VDKs for a while now, but there's a new process of VDK um, to where we can upload the list, you know, just like you guys upload into that the CSV list into Phone Burner, uh, there's a pr another program that will allow you to upload the CSV list into it and do a mass text out, and you guys can actually set appointments through text and put them right into your calendars and run the appointments during that time. Blake, you've already tried this a little bit on a small scale, haven't you? Yeah, I did uh, 41 texts, four replies, and three appointments so far. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, was that was that with your age leads or just your, you know, your old, uh, your game time leads or what kind of, what, just like all your leads you've been kind of rolling through? Yeah, all my leads right now. Yep. All right. Cool, man. All right. So I want y'all to take note. There's a company out there called Project Broadcast. Uh, it's a software system. It is a paid system. You guys can do this on your own if you want to, but I'm trying to teach you how to understand mass texting. Uh, I've always used for my agency different texting apps to get things out there. A lot of y'all are on the text blast. I use simple texting, but when I dove into Project Broadcast, it crushes simple texting. Like, I was like, I was like, what are we doing? You know, the only the only down factor that it doesn't have Lake is that um. You can't put an embedded link out there where people can sign themselves up for your text list. So a cool thing is you can do simple texting. Like if you want to do it for an agency blast, and this is kind of off topic, but if you want to do it for agency blast, you can keep simple texting to create the CSV list because you could actually pull whatever list you have in simple texting, remove the CSV and put it in project broadcasting already. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. So I've got the embedded link and people can join my text blast and I can just put the CSV list into project broadcasting. So you pay the $25 a month for simple texting. You don't use it. And you know how simple, I don't know if you are using it or not, but simple texting um, uses their credit systems in kind of mm -hmm. a weird way. And it depends on the length of the text. Mm -hmm. Project broadcasting allows you to do video embed, uh, JPEGs, and the size of the text doesn't even matter. Wow, no way. And it only uses one credit. That's awesome. Check. So I was like, I was like, man, I feel like I've been getting ripped off for two years. <laughs> <laughs> for real. So what that means is, so I believe they they have a, a level where you can do 2000 texts, you know, for like 50 bucks a month. So if you pull um, 200, you pull 200 TLG fours, you put them in the list. It costs you a hundred bucks for the leads, right? You put them in the list and you text them all. And I want to throw up two texts. First one's going to be for age leads to be able to set the appointment. I'm going to put these in the upline chat, or not the upline chat, but the main thread. And then for seasoned agents, I'm going to show you a conversion. Now, obviously, uh, you guys can set up for conversions two years after. That's when you can get paid on them. So, like, this is for, for the seasoned agents on that one. But for age leads, you set a text. Now, here's the cool thing, like. You can set up your own number through this and you can go back and forth in the software and talk to the clients just like you're talking to them regularly. Wow. And it doesn't Without replying to everybody? That. Say it again? Doesn't reply to everybody else at the same time? No, no. It creates individual chats when they write back to you. Dang, I got to so show my can, aunt that. <laughs> and, you can have, and you can have individual conversations with people. And this is how... So Christina ran this for Blaze and has been running it for the last two weeks. Now, Blaze has written on TLG4s and obviously conversions, but he's really, you know, he's hammering fours because he wanted to make sure this was working for his team. <laughs> so in the last three weeks, he's written close to 27,000 annual premium. Wow. 
just by sending text out. And Christina's actually just booking them, say, oh, we got a spot available. She sends them the, you know, send them and books it into his calendar link. And he just calls them at that time. They're there. She postures them, you know, sends them the, the invite links and uh, they lock in. That's and it's huge. All, it's all done through text. Wow. So um, I'm going to post up the project broadcasting link and GT agency. I'm going to post up the text that are sent out. And then guys, it's just booking from there. Now, this isn't what I'm telling you guys to do instead of making your dials. This is in uh, conjunction with, this is in lieu of like, just do it with it and continue to do what you guys are doing. But this is going to add additional ways to get in touch with your clients. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Do y'all have any questions? Anybody got any questions? Go ahead and uh, use your little reaction button at the bottom and raise your hand. We'll call you out. Jason, Jason's what's your question, buddy? Uh, what was the dollar amount per month you said? So the they have different plan. They have different plans on how many texts. You know, so it's a it's one credit per one text per how many people you're sending it to. So if you have a list of two hundred people, you send it one. That's two hundred credits. Makes sense. Okay. So mm -hmm. I believe it's two thousand credits for fifty bucks a month. Nice. All right. Which is good. Like for me, I'm I'm paying I'm I'm paying like two seventy five a month right now for two thousand credits. <laughs> Dang. It really is what I'm to text right. up uh text West out to y'all. Who's iPhone? That's uh Zach Bohannon. And I'm I'm a newbie, so I was just curious what does VDK stand for? Virtual, Virtual door knock. Door knock. Okay. And here, here, here's on top of that. I wouldn't recommend until you're in conversation with them, wait, to, to add your business card. Because all it is is sparking up conversation <clears throat> with people. Once you've got the appointment locked in, then you send your, your digital business card, lock it in with the Zoom appointment link, make them respond right then and lock that appointment into your schedule. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask was uh, the he hi, hello. So it makes more sense to do that because people are wary of clicking on a weird link that has your business card up front. Correct. Correct. So but if you are just in conversation with somebody after you send them out and it's going to be quick and he, like you can keep the same list in there. So it's the same CSV list. So okay. you can deactivate people that are in the list but won't send to them again. So if you're continuing to build up your list, you just keep sending the same one out. And uh, hit them over the head again. You know, they even have drip campaigns where you can just drip on them over and over and over. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Brandon Brown has a question. What's up, Brandon? All right. Make sure. Is my mic working? Yeah, buddy. All right. Sweet. So um, when you have it converted and you send it to that Project Blast or whatever, does it automatically recognize the cell phone number or are we having to go through and manually select because i know with a lot of leads i get two or three numbers so does that software automatically find the cell phone number or do we have to go through and manually pick it, it so it loads up when you grab age leads uh it comes on a excel spreadsheet so if you guys so we're, a lot of us are using brown or uh, brandon so we ask we pay 25 cents extra per lead for the CA, csb list which is excel spreadsheet and it automatically creates a file with the cell phone number on it. And when you click upload from that list, it just automatically uploads everything into the software. Good question. Guys, it's some brand new, exciting stuff. Any more questions? It is, man. It is, man. What was the so name I'll, of this? The name of the company? Project Broadcast. And I'll, I'll shoot you a link just to kind of give you, I'll shoot you, I'll shoot a link in the main thread. Make sure y'all are hitting the right one. But other you know, than still that, yet, still talking. yet more game changing innovation. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you, we're looking at another software that kind of does this and has the same functionality as phone burner and is built for insurance agents. So it also has a CRM attached and allows you to do reminder text three months, uh, six months, a year, one year, two years. And you can automatically embed them in with every client you sell. No way. But that's top secret. 
We're working on that. Well, well not anymore, but <laughs> I, I can't I can't give you the company name. Uh but yeah. me, Kim, me and Kim are, are reviewing uh what they have going on. But so far what I've seen, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, it goes to show you too, because half of it is using for age leads, the other half for for weathered agents who've been here for more than two years for conversions. If y'all don't know what a conversion is. Forster's Financial and the Columbian Financial Group allow you to take someone's term policy that's been around for two years and transfer it, convert it into a whole life policy, and they will pay you 100% of your commission again, right? right? So it shows you how to stick and stay. I've already made an extra 25000 not AP. I made an extra 25000 this year just doing conversions. That's right. And that's that has right. to be so conversions we... with Forster's? They already uh, have or to have CFG. No Correct. Yep. So any Forrester's term that you sell, mention to your client that, hey, in two years, you're going to have an option to convert this guaranteed. Even if you have cancer, even if you have health issues, you can convert it into a whole life policy. Okay, you cool. set it up and you can drip on them all the way through then, you know, just mm -hmm. talking to them through uh, um, you're just the drip campaign. Man, these kids set this thing up however you want to. But you know, on the forefront of what uh, project broadcast does, you know, obviously you can create a text blast. You can create an agent blast for recruiting, but you, you can just upload tons and tons of data of all of your leads in there and just drip on them, text them, hit them mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So huge. Awesome. All right, I'll shoot all them to uh GT agency thread. Y'all check it out. If you got questions, let me know. Um, but try it out for yourself. I'm almost certain that old boy from today, y'all see Stephen Perkins? He just wrote another 1,900. So he's at 12,000 annual premium for today. Dang. And he's dripping. He's dripping. <laughs> Holy moly. Yep. Does this guy so, ha already have his license? Is he brand new to the industry? He's new. Wow. That's amazing. He's new. So he's picked up a ton of fours, you know, just following um, in Blaze's lead there, man, and uh, calling people up and rolling through the text blast and yeah. set up. That was his fifth appointment for today. How many leads did he pick up? What was his investment? 300 bucks. 300 bucks. And he's written over 12,000 annual premium. This life yeah. can, this business can change your life in one day. Yeah, That's man. crazy. We appreciate so having you on. Yeah, I'm certain we'll hear from him on Monday. And uh, hey, y'all, you know we're seven days into the month. Mm -hmm. You won't get him back. Y'all keep moving forward. Lake, I'm turning it yes. over to you, bro. All right, appreciate it. All right, guys, <laughs> how crazy is that stuff? We get to drip on our clients with texting and keep on them and keep on them autonomously. That's going to take a lot. I mean, I've been doing texting for maybe a couple months, but it's tedious to do by yourself is typing each and every one. So I'm super pumped to have that. Um, tonight's topic is something in the similar vein. It's contacting your clients. It's handling your leads. Um, it's about being efficient with your leads. And this is kind of something that we don't go over too much, but it's just teaching you some foundational organization skills with your leads. So as an agent, when you get in here and you're buying leads, you're going to have your first stack. Okay. The first thing that you guys need to know is that you call through all of your brand new leads, the leads that you just got into your hand. Okay. And then what do you do with them after? Okay, there's two things. You can either get more leads or you go back through them. Okay, especially you agents on tier one leads. Okay, you're going to have a small investment, but as time goes on, you're going to be like me. You just have stacks and stacks like this laying everywhere of leads. Okay, now let's say you're over a month into this. Okay, you're going to have a giant stack of leads. If you make it through your new brand new stack, which you always okay. call first, you are going to hop on and start working the, the newest to oldest. Okay. You're going to start working the newest to oldest on your leads all the way back until you get. So I work a month at a time. So I have all of the leads that I get for the last four weeks in a pile and I just cycle through them. Now, what do I do when I have leads that I haven't gotten a hold of in a month? They go into their own pile and I put those in 
files that list the month and the year. So let's say if it's a little bit slow or I've gotten through all my dials that day, I'm going to go pick up the month before and the month before that and dial through those. That's going to be hyper efficient because sometimes you may call someone 40 plus times before you get a hold of them. Typically, the really tough ones, you're going to get a hold on the eighth call. On the tough people who don't pick up the first couple of times, you're going to reach them on the eighth call. Okay, so it's important that you keep those leads and don't throw away any leads uh, until you're getting and pretty much until they tell you straight up. No, even then I keep on my leads because a no right now doesn't mean it's not going to be a yes later. All right. A good example of that. I had uh, a couple that um, that I met with last year. I could not get a hold of him. I called him 25 times. Okay. I had time to go back through my leads last year from my stack of people that I met with, of my no shows, of my cancellations. That's in this stack. I decided to dial that stack. I'm meeting with them tomorrow and I'm going to be writing around 2000 annual premium. That was from last November, right? If I would have just given up on that lead because he said no the first time, I wouldn't be, I'd be out 2000 AP tomorrow. So that's your pretty much your lead etiquette is to make sure you're dialing newest to old and keeping organized. Keep all of your cancellations and your no shows uh, and your think about it's in a pile. Keep them and dial through them every once in a while. Take three month break, dial through them again. Take another three month break and uh, dial through them again because you're going to uh, be able to get a hold of somebody. You're going to be able to uh, talk to someone who's ready for help because they've been thinking about it for such a long time. Nelson, why don't you share with everybody how you work your leads? Oh my goodness. You, you know already, uh, I try to be as organized as I can and rework them. I like to keep them separated by county and state, but within that folder, I do what Lake is talking about. I separate the ones that I'm going to rework. I make sure, especially if it's one that's a callback, I make a little notation what it was they told me because half the time they don't remember and I want to make sure I don't put my foot in my mouth and remind them they already told me they weren't interested. You'd be surprised how many times you call someone you spoke to who said, I'm not interested, and now they set an appointment with you because you just caught them on a bad day. So staying organized and making little notes on each one, especially the date that you call. You don't have to put the date and then put- Hey, Nelson, um, hang on. I'm sorry. Lashana, can you stay muted, please? That'd be great. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, nobody feel bad. We all make a mistake every once in a while. We just have to be more conscientious. So as I was saying, within the folder that I have my callbacks, that I, sometimes they want you to call them back. Other times they've told you no, and you want to call them back because you know it sounded like they were in a bad mood. You caught them at a bad time. So what you do is this. It's, re it's really simple, team. Make a small notation. So on my lead, like you'll see, right? Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. I'll put the date. That's all you got to do is put the date. If they didn't answer, that date's sufficient. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything. So don't put no um, the, uh, no answer. Don't waste your time. Just put the date. And then if you sent a VDK or a video door knock, put a little dash, put VDK. And um, make sure you follow what Lake is saying go back and rework the leads every week dial your newest leads first when you're done with that go back to the older lead and then older leads still then cycle back to the beginning mm -hmm. either se separate them by state or by county but be thorough because you don't want to miss that one person and then lake buys an age lead and he signs up your person <laughs> yep that's yep. right exactly Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. You brought up a good point, too, is is taking thorough notes on your on your leads. So uh, let me try to pull up this whiteboard. I haven't used this much, um, but with 
with my leads, I'm just going to put in the upper right hand corner how many times I've called them. So I'm going to put, uh, let's see, call times two. And then I'm going to write the date right here. That's all I do. Or if I text them, text times, and I'm butchering this with my, with my touchpad, call times two, right? Um, so pretty much you're going to want to write anything down that the client say, the client said, call back. Okay. Well, how do you remember how to call them back? I always put it in my calendar. Always, always. So, um, you know, I'm going to put in what they're, uh, what we talked about, like who they're looking to protect. That's another great reason to use the, um, the questionnaire. Let me see if I can get this to unblur. So this is a lead questionnaire. So it has all of their information on here. First name, last name, date of birth, height and weight, if they're smokers, mortgage amount, loan amount and uh, term, and then all of their the major issues we have to ask and their medications. So I'm going to put their why at the top so that I know what to talk about. Hey, they were looking to protect each other. They're looking to protect their kids. Any additional ammo that you can have to bring into that appointment. Uh, let's say they have current policies. I'm going to write down on the lead or on the questionnaire, hey, has a policy through Mutual of Omaha, got back into... Um, you know, 2018, currently paying this for this face amount, I'm going to get as much information as I can. Because when you do that, you're building a better case to help the client, leave them in a better place than you found them. All right. So the next thing is when do you VDK? So VDK stands for virtual door knock. Um, you know, the reason it's called a virtual door knock is because back before COVID, we were all working in the field, we were driving to if you guys can believe this, we were driving to people's houses to meet with them and go into their homes, sit down, do the sale right in, right there, right in front of them. We'd have to go to their table. We'd have a conversation. Then we drive home. Sometimes people are two, three hours away. Sometimes we do travel trips, six hours away, stay at a hotel for a week and just work a bunch of leads in that area. Uh, but if we ran out of appointments or we didn't, or someone no showed us, we would take the leads, we would drive around and we'd go knock on their door with the lead. Hey, is this you? I was just in the area helping other families. Okay, that, that's what a door knock was. Now, since everything's virtual, we do it virtually. It's a virtual door knock. It's a text with a picture of the lead and a small text that says, hey, I've been trying to reach you, yada, yada you can ask your upline for that specific text. That's what a virtual door knock is. Typically, I don't virtually door knock anybody until I've tried calling them at least six times. So that's about three dial sessions because I'm going to call one person two times in a row on the first pass through. Then when I get back to that lead, I'm going to do it again. I always double dial my leads. So I'll call them, they don't pick up, call them right back again. OK, I'm going to do that a third time. So, you know, maybe this is a week that I've called them six times. If they do not pick up on that sixth time, I'm sending them a VDK. Right. Some people are picky about picking up their phones. Sometimes they work a weird schedule. That VDK is going to help get them that information so that they can make contact with you. That is the um, simplest way to get a hold of someone. Now we've got um, the system coming up where we can just drip on them. We can just take our age leads that we couldn't reach and blast everybody all at once. I don't have to spend, you know, 15 minutes doing eight VDKs because I met with, I wasn't able to reach them on the sixth dial. Um, so that's going to make our lives a lot easier. It's going to bring us in some more appointments. Uh, Zach, um, we'll wait for questions at the end there, bud, but you'll be first. So um, as far as um, lead purchase, okay, this is, a good subject because you want to give yourself enough of a shot to set appointments. There's nothing wrong coming in here and uh, spending a hundred bucks on leads. If that's what you can do, great. That's awesome. That's going to get you started. But you have to know that with tier one leads, they're at a 10% appointment setting ratio. If you, if you buy a hundred leads, you're going to set anywhere from eight to 10 appointments. Okay. That's your expectation. If you get those appointments out of it, don't expect a, to squeeze a stone for water. You're not going to get many more appointments out of a hundred leads if you've already gotten 10 appointments out of there. All right. So there needs to be a line where you start 
ramping up your business by spending more each week on leads. Now, the one thing I love about the Lisa Group is that we don't own any lead companies. We don't own any lead generation companies. So there's no conflict of interest. It's not like the Lisa Group is trying to push leads on us so that they can make money on leads. We use all third-party vendors that have been doing this a long time that are that are already proven by the top agents in the company who've already gone through this they've already vetted the process to make sure that we can sell it correctly to make sure it's a viable lead vendor for us so you're really ideally when you get in here you're going to want to spend 200 to 350 every week on leads as you're learning because out of every hundred dollars you spend you're going to write about a thousand annual premium okay and if you look at just the base contract, 70%, right? That's 700 bucks. You spent 100 to get 700 back, right? So really, you want to look at all of your leads as a batch. I wouldn't just take one lead and hope I got an appointment out of it. I want to get two, three, 400 age leads at a time so that I give myself a large enough shot to use that math in my advantage. And what I mean by, by that math is that I want 10%, in, anywhere 5 to 10% of those to become appointments, right? So I want to make sure I give myself enough of a shot with my learning curve, with handling objections. We're going to screw up. It's normal, but I want to give myself enough of a shot. So at my level now, I'm spending anywhere from 700 to uh, $1,200 a month, but I'm also bringing in 30000 25000 $20,000 a month, right? That's a great arbitrage, okay? Once you get a hang of those tier one leads, a couple weeks in, we can move you to tier two. The only difference that you need to know is a tier two lead and a tier one is just the age of the lead, but you're gonna deal with a little bit of less notes. You're still gonna get objections and everything else, but it's gonna take less leads to get the same amount of arbitrage. That's the only difference. A lead is a lead is a lead. It's an excuse to talk to someone about insurance. So that's what I've got tonight on working leads. Let's take some questions. Zach, I saw you pop up first, brother. I'm going to give you the first shot. I appreciate you, man. Um, how long do you wait in between calling leads? So you get your initial lead, you double dial them, they don't answer. How long between that point and the point you try them again? is that i'm sorry what what so, go ahead but between the time you get your initial lead you double dial them they don't answer how long do you wait until you double dial them again and then do it a third time and then vdk typically you're gonna have enough leads to to not even get back to where you started on that same day right? If you have a hundred leads, it's going to take you a day or two to get through all those leads. That's about 200, 200 dials. Okay. So basically it's whenever I get back to that lead is when I'm going to start double dialing it again. I got you. So I'm just working through until I go back to that beginning. So like I said, if I have a week's worth of leads, I just got, let's say I got a hundred leads this week. I dialed 55 of them on Saturday. On Monday, I'm going to dial the rest of the 45, okay? Then Tuesday, I start back over again where I started on Saturday. So this is where I keep all my leads. I'm going to put them face down to the left of me on a table that I have so they stay in order that I dialed them. And the only time I take out a lead is because I made an appointment. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Appreciate you. You got it. Lake, can I questions? hop in on that? Yeah, Jared, let's go. Hey, so the number one thing that I heard in there is double dial. There's no such thing as a double dial. We only have triple dials. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, guys, uh, when I first started, I was afraid to do triple dials. And let me tell you the thought process behind a triple dial real quick. The first time you dial somebody, how, how often does anybody answer a phone number they don't recognize? Very rarely, right? Rarely. So the second time you dial it, you don't leave a message, you dial it immediately back a second time. And now the person's thinking, oh my gosh, they probably have the wrong phone number, right? But when you dial the number the third time, 
it creates the sense of urgency. The third time is what creates the sense of urgency because now the person on the other end of that phone is like, oh my gosh, this person is trying to get a hold of me. And like, I don't know about you or Nell, but I've gotten so many callbacks from Ali that says, hey, I just saw that somebody was trying to get a hold of me. What's going on? Mm -hmm. So the triple dial creates the urgency. When you first come on, it is super counterintuitive. You're thinking, Oh my gosh, I would totally hate it if somebody dialed me three times in a row, but it creates the urgency and that's why we do it. Anyways, like back to you. That's a great point. Most of my appointments are not set on the first dial, guys. It's usually set on the second or third. Nelson, you had something to say? Yeah, I want to chime in on that. But before that, I had a point to make. By the way, if you know you're doing a triple dial and you got to expect that they're going to be a little anxious, don't get surprised. You're the one triple dialing. You're creating the stimulus. So when they get on the phone, don't go, oh, I'm sorry. Don't act apologetic. And on the contrary, say, oh, my God, I'm so glad I finally reached you. That will calm them down and go, oh, what's going on? But you have to be prepared because you're the stimulus. Their anxiety is the response. Be prepared and be matter of fact. Oh, my God, I'm so glad we reached you. My office has been trying to get a hold of you before we closed your file. We know how important this is to you. You sent in a form and then go from there, okay? So I wanted to, to, to add on to that, Jared, that was that was beautiful. But I want to change everyone's concept here. Everyone here had a job at some time and you had a job, you went to work, you filled up the car with gas. The first day when you were broken, you like you borrowed some money for gas maybe because you were broke. But after you got your paycheck a few times, what did you do? You subtracted your rent, you subtracted your mortgage, you subtracted groceries, you subtracted your expenses. And those months where you had five weeks, you were excited because there was a lot of money left over, right? Well, when you first buy leads your first time in the company, you're buying them from your pockets. But from that point on, you're never paying for leads again. You're buying it from your profits. What's all this talk about? I don't want to spend a lot of money. You you pay for your gas every week to go to work and you don't begrudgingly do it. You just fill up because it's what you do to make your money. And you subtract it from your expense as an expense and the net is what you keep. Get excited. If it wasn't for the lead, you wouldn't be able to have that money. So the more money you spend, the more money you make when it comes to our business. Um, people are the fuel of your business. Fill up. Make sure you stay filled up with fuel because this business will pay you tenfold every time. Like Lake said, every $100 you spend is $1,000 of AP. And the more you skill up, the greater that return of investment comes. Lake, you're doing better than 10 to 1, right? Yeah. A lot. But look at that smile. Did you see that smile? He said, yeah. How much did you do in a day this week, sir? I did uh, just shy of 10,000, 9,800 one day. Did you spend Did you spend $1,000 on leads to make that 10,000? No, I spent I uh, 700. Because you're better. So I just wanted to make sure you understand. You're not buying leads from your pockets. You're buying it from your profits. Mm -hmm. it's a business expense get excited okay yes thank you thank you all right iphone has a question that's zach boynhan yeah zach bohannon uh bohannon thanks. sorry buddy that's okay no worries uh just two quick questions one um do you print all your leads out to have on paper yeah yes i am very tactile uh it's much easier uh, I know uh, one of my agents, Zach, he can type everything and keep it organized, uh, but I am not that way. I've got to have it. I've got to see it. Um, and I've got to take notes by hand on there. That's just the way I am. So every single one of my leads is printed out always. Uh, and I always keep the stacks here. So when I get rid of them, I'm just going to, I'm going to shred the, the old ones. Okay. And then uh, my second question is uh, for like, let's say a new agent, 
uh, when you spend that hundred dollars on leads each week, do you do it at like the beginning of the week or do you kind of spread it out throughout the week? Cause Katie's putting new leads out every day. Yeah. She's putting new leads out every day. So um, if you make it through your first hundred leads, cause it's real easy to do, it's going to take you a few days. I'd say just start again. Um, and then you'll start to find a rhythm that you're going to buy leads every Friday because our big day is Saturday mornings, eight to yes. noon. That's when we're going to reach everyone. So um, typically I buy my leads on Fridays. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You got it, Zach. Anybody else have questions? Any questions? Nothing? All right. We're going to call it quits for tonight. We have our Wednesday winners next week, 8 p.m. Eastern, as always. Um, the, we had a lot of people on tonight. I'm glad to see the crew come in. We had over 30 people today. So a lot of you are excited to learn. A lot of you are new. Get with your upline if you have if you think of your question after, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.